Hi, today we will be making dedicated stage recoil for this glass blowing light. There will be one main difference from the previous designs, and that is that I will have three separate coils and I will glue it together. Basically, I will just wet the copper in the epoxy and then cure it between two plates to make sure it will be flat. I think that there are some uh, coats designed for this purpose that will be better than epoxy, but I guess they will be expensive as fuck. But to be honest, this process was pretty horrible, so maybe I should consider something else. Anyway, so why am I doing it this way? So first of all, it will be easier to position these coils relative to each other. Second reason is that maybe, maybe there will be a little bit better heat dissipation. And last reason is that there will be pockets where I can place the hole sensors. Okay, so on this steel plate I have four nuts as a spacers. There are 7 mm thick, so the coil thickness should be 7 mm also. Oh yes, and I am using these no smoking signs as a no s no smoking, no sticking surface. So the epoxy should not stick onto that very well. I mean, I cannot find wide enough sticky tape, so that's why I'm using this. However, it was damaged during releasing of the epoxy, so maybe if I did not stick that, it will be better. Okay, so I will sandwich this coil and turn it upside down a few times, so epoxy will flow in this coil, theoretically at least, and then put it on the, some heat source. Okay, it's done, so let's release this. And surprise, surprise, white epoxy. Never seen anything like that. I mean, I was using the same epoxy I was using every single time, so... Weird. I think the best thing you can do is open the sandwich during the curing process and remove all excess epoxy you can, and then place it into sandwich again and let it cure. That way you will have to do a minimal amount of filing, but anyway, there will be sharp edges everywhere, so it's pain. You can see how this coil looks like after some manual cleaning. Okay, so let's glue these coils together. Also, these signs looked promising, but they will stick to the epoxy. I am still using the same drawing to align these coils, but for gluing I am using 5 minute epoxy. Well, this sequence is quite long and I have nothing to say. Hmm, I can play the song. Well, that was stupid. Anyway, I was planning to use one wire spool for two faces, but somehow I made three and still have some left. And I used this thing to drag the wire. The end is from urethane tubing, so it's much better. Here you can see the clearance from the mounting bolts. Not very much, but it's okay. And to make holders, I made this drawing. This is front view for the spindle assembly. Well, at least part of. And here's the spindle assembly overlaid from the side. But you get the idea what I'm trying to do, I guess. So the stator will be mounted there. So I approximated the shape of the holder and cut it out. This is 20mm piece of hardwood, so it's the same thickness basically as stator. And I'm going to align these pieces and find the best position, basically. The block direct landed the stator on the drawing is the aluminum flat bar. So it's basically important to have some clearance between the stator and this flat bar and also between the flat bar and the stator holders. Okay, now we can tack weld these together. But first I must prepare my electrode. I found this for very cheap in Tesco supermarket. Okay, so alignment looks quite okay. Now I will just drill the holes into the aluminium and transfer them onto wood and connect them together. Then it will be a good idea to apply a generous amount of epoxy and leave it on some flat spot. Okay, so everything is done, so let's test this sucker. Nothing special, but look, no hands. I mean, it does start turning on itself after a while. Okay, so let's take a look at this assembly. 
the rotor is friction fit on the stainless steel tube by squeezing some polyurethane tube with the mounting bolts on the, on the rotor itself. The stator is mounted with wood screws. It is quite stiff but not as flat as I would like. And the rotor wobble is not very significant. By the way, this is not a loop, this is stator connected in triangle configuration. Yeah, and you can also see that the stator is vibrating quite a lot, and I don't know if I am going to do anything about this. But I must take into account that this is only 24 watts or so, and this motor has capability of running at, well, maybe even 300 watts at peak. Well, now we can slowly wrap it up. Well, I have some fans for these whole sensors and the Arduino. This week I will try to prepare PID loop for this motor. According to implementation of the software, we will see if the Arduino will have enough resources to run both motors or only this one. It should have, but I don't know. Also, I am including this behind the scenes. Scenes. Since this stator is very interesting. I mean, I wanted to share that warm feeling in my heart when I see some novel design. Okay, so thanks for watching and see you next time.